this little mouse, Spark, the lowest of the low, he steps up and saves the world. So that's where it began. I began developing that. And then as I developed that, the theme of be that spark, that we can all be that spark, no matter how big or how small, we can do some amazing things. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky. I'm um, so glad to have you with us today. If this is your first time on the show, you're in for a treat because I'm on the line with the wonderful Chris Parsons. Welcome to the show, Chris. Uh, it's great to be here, Rick. Now, you and I were briefly chatting about... Uh, your life and technology and how it's changed our lives and all these uh, bits and pieces. And I'd love to explore um, that with you a little bit more about your personal life. But uh, you're obviously um, the uh, founder of Zuro Media, and we're going to be talking about your work with children's literature and in, and in particular, A Little Spark. But before we do any of that, Chris, I'd love to uh, learn a little bit more about your life, maybe by starting with where you're located. Well, I'm located in Dallas, Texas, uh, and we've moved. I've lived in a couple of cities in the U.S., Atlanta and uh, D.C., originally from Canada. But through my technology career, I've lived in uh, London. I've lived in Korea, but I'm a Texan now. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Now, you've, you've made some major shifts away from the corporate world to do your own thing, essentially, and it's going really gangbusters for you. So it's a real credit to you. I'd love to take a deep dive into that. Now, sure, um, yeah. you started off at, in a fishing village. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I don't know if you know, Newfoundland is a province of Canada, very remote place, very Irish. Uh, so I grew up in a little place called Flat Rock, Newfoundland, population 400. Uh, fantastic. And I go back there whenever I can. Family's still there. Yep. Very, uh, very rich in music and storytelling, and you know, Culture. and that's where I sort of connected into this this story uh, telling thing. And and you know, I I left there after I graduated college, and then my life moved into you know the technology world. Yes, yeah. well, it's I, I find it amazing, uh, you know, this whole idea of technology that you can be where you are and where I am, and we're just connecting like we're around the corner. It's just yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic. Now, um, do you get people coming to you and saying Newfoundland, and does it annoy you? Uh, that annoys me, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to let you, so how would you pronounce it? Uh, I would have said Newfoundland, but yeah. now I've so, learnt. Yeah, so Newfoundland. 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 Well, there you go for everybody's on the show today. You've learnt something. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now in turn... people from Newfoundland, and Rick, people from Newfoundland are called Newfies. Newfies. Fantastic. Yeah. I love it. Now, in terms of uh, Newfoundland, uh, Newfoundland uh, dogs, I know that yep. you have a couple. Tell us about I them. I have two. Yeah, I have two. And then we, right now, we're babysitting my son's dog. <clears throat> and I had three cats. I, I lost two in the last year. They were older cats. Mm -hmm. And uh, so animals are a big part of my life and in the book as well. As you'll see in the book, yeah. the animals are sort of featured in there. Yeah, I love the fact that you you love uh, large breed dogs. We're a large breed dog family ourselves, and they're just so nice to cuddle. They really yeah. just give you a place, to, you know, a safe place to fall almost when you need them. You can hear one of them in the background there. I apologize. For oh, that. not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Sound effect. <laughs> now, you talked about music and, uh, you know, a little bit about culture. Tell us a little bit about the types of music that, um, that you enjoy. I like I like any type of music, you know. I like not so much some of the modern like EDM music, mm -hmm. but but certainly you know rock and roll, jazz. I like and I'm just fascinated by people who create music. And uh, in fact, I was too on um, Tuesday night here in Dallas. I went to a Rolling Stones concert. Oh yes, yeah, so I, I heard about that. I heard that yeah. was going to happen. How was it? It was unbelievable. It's amazing. These guys are, are I think Mick Jagger, 78 years old. Yeah. And he's dancing and it's just amazing. It's, you know, he's it's inspirational. You see. And it's great. So I like that. I like jazz, <clears throat> you know, all kinds of music. And through this, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about music, but through this whole adventure in the last five years with Zero Media and A Little Spark, I really got connected into the music world. Yeah, there's so... Time. 
there's so many different ways that we could take this call. I'd love to, if we could, mm -hmm. just talk about uh, sources of inspiration as they apply to your personal life at the moment. Now, the next one I was going to ask you about was movies. Do you have time for movies and, and are they a source for you? Yeah, yeah, no, they are. I, I love I love movies. Uh, I love, you know what I really, when I can, and I get the right kind, I love historical documenta documentaries. Yes. And, and there's so many, so much great content out there. Uh, so I, whenever I like the history channel and I, you know, because I think people don't spend enough time understanding history and, you know, so many distractions for kids and all that, mm -hmm. but it's, it's fascinating. And, uh, so I, 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 like that genre. I like, you know, uh, detective, you know, really good detective stories and things with intrigue and, but yeah, I, I, uh, and not so much into reality TV. That's one one no, uh, pass. category. Yeah. <laughs> now, Chris, in, in, when you uh, are active and but you know in your private time, do you like uh, sports? Do you do any anything like that? Oh or? yeah, oh what, yeah. What do you well, do? I'm a big football fan. So I grew up in Canada, but we moved here. <clears throat> so college football was huge. Yes, yes. In the U.S., as you know, it's it's massive. Yes. And so when my son was looking at schools, we looked at big schools and. He picked Alabama, the University of Alabama. And <laughs> if you know anything about college football, University of Alabama, you want to be a football fan, that's where that's you, where you want to go. <laughs> and so I've adopted. So so football, mostly college football, NFL, but my passion growing up, and you'll relate to this, was rugby. Oh, rugby. <laughs> and, and rugby is huge in Newfoundland. I mean, Newfoundland is like the center of rugby in Canada. And yeah, yeah. A lot of Irish, Irish influence. So rugby was my sport, rugby and, and hockey. Yeah, and, wow. Uh, I love these conversations because it gives a bit of a human element to the people behind the businesses. Yeah. And I think that's really important for the sake of context. Now, when you were growing up, Chris, I'd love to, if we could, is to tap into something of your own childhood that you can recall that was a fond memory for you. Can, do you have anything that you remember? Yeah, there's so many things around sports and hockey. That was that was a fun time, and yeah. my parents, you know, you get up at six, and they get up at six in the morning, <laughs> so every, and take you to the rink. I you mean, get up at seven. So for them, it wasn't <laughs> fun, but but through that, I I developed a lot of friendships, and and so that was a happy time. And then the other other thing, my family in that little village, uh, and still are, we're we're you know, the fishery. So like my family's in commercial fishery now, crab. So growing up back then, I was around the water, and as a little kid, I, when they go out fishing, I'd go with them. Not early in the morning, but in the afternoon. So that yeah. whole, that whole experience, you know, it's long gone, and the world has changed a lot. But that whole experience of being around the water and the fish, and and it was it was a magical time. And yeah, uh, yeah. and 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 I I still go back. I go back to Newfoundland at least every second year and it, it's it's almost like it hasn't changed the people and and again my family now instead of cod fishery which yep. has sort of disappeared they're into offshore crab and mm. all that so it's you know that's when i think about my childhood i think the fun uh, and just the intrigue of being a little guy yeah. attached to this this big thing with this my, magic my world now you talk yeah. you talk about your father and i'd love to uh um, you know, and also might I add, uh, Chris, that you, I could see you tapping into that memory vault and I could see how much joy there was. So I really do appreciate you sharing now. Okay. Uh, you talked about your father growing up. Are there, have, have there been many inspirational, I guess, motivational people that gave you direction as you were growing up? Well, he was he was one one person who had a major, obviously my mom, but my father was, you know, he was a huge man. Like he was like six, six, true Irishman. And he just woke up every day and went out and did it, whether it was the fishing, whether he was in politics, his business. And so he was a major inspiration. And then as I moved through a business, there was a guy I connected with early on who's still a friend. In fact, I had breakfast with him last week. Mm -hmm. and he became very, very successful. But he, even as I started this journey, I remember I had a conversation, this is like four or five years ago. And I said, you know, I'm thinking about moving into this. And he said, you have to do it. It's your passion and it's really good. Your concept is really good. So he had a major impact. And then there's all these people um, along the way from, there was a great four teacher um, 
Mrs. Wilkinson. <laughs> Amazing how we really, remember the names. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. And I saw her recently. She's like 85 oh, wow. years old. And I saw her recently and she calls me Chrissy. <laughs> Chrissy Parsons. <laughs> Hi, Chrissy. And, yeah, but I remember back, and she, she, geography and history were the two subjects, and she just made it unbelievable. And you know, you're in this little community, totally isolated, and there's this big world, and she brought that world to me, and and that really inspired me. That you know, when I grew up, unlike a lot of other people in my family, I left and went on this adventure, and so I credit her with just exposing me to the world the world and uh, and and she's still around and she still she plays uh, she she plays different instruments she plays the accordion and oh, she yeah. still plays it oh, and wow. so there was always music and we had the concerts back then and we'd sing on the concerts and <laughs> she's a light in the world isn't she totally still is yeah still fantastic is. now i i love this sort of call this is what really makes a difference uh, to the audience who listen to the my future business show because we're talking about you not only your business which we'll be pivoting to in a moment but in terms of being uh, you know an, an author and somebody who does something very unique with children's literature do you read do you take in audio books do you like doing that sort of thing I, yeah i i read yeah i take i just made a three thousand mile trip uh, from Canada <laughs> with my dog, so I couldn't fly. So, yes, long yes. Back. so yeah, I listen to everything. Yep. Um, um, Tim Ferriss, if you're familiar with him, of he has course. a podcast. Yes. He like you, he interviews all these people. And I find that amazing because you get to experience people uh, through that. And so, yeah, no, I read and I re I've read a lot of children's books in the last <laughs> five years. And and the classics and C.S. Lewis and and all that stuff, just amazing content that I was aware of, obviously, growing up. But I've, I've sort of revisited that whole world. And um, it, it really is magical and it's inspirational and it inspired me. And and then you ask about movies and content. I, I tell you who probably my biggest inspiration, unfortunately, he's no longer with us, mm -hmm. was Jim Henson. Oh, of course, the Muppets. the Muppets. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great Sesame guy. Street, right? Sesame Street, the Muppets, and all those characters, and and just amazing what he did for kids and adults, creating these magical worlds and music, and you know he's sort of uh, my hero, and I still watch those shows, the Muppet <laughs> shows. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The Muppet movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, I love yeah. it. I absolutely, Grouch was my favourite. I have to say, in in, in these yeah. sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, the Swedish Chef. I'm, uh, and I can boop, do most boop, of boop, the voices. Boop, 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 boop. And so I do a lot it. of. The, I've done a lot of those voices. <laughs> years. And I haven't. I haven't been my stories. Kids love the voices. And, yeah, you know. look, um, you know, and we're doing exactly what your your life's mission is all about: is is making each other smile and enjoy our time on this planet and I, and I wonder um, given now that uh, you know you must be busy with Zoom and uh, because of its success I wonder what a, I guess a daily routine would look like for you do you get up early and what, what's it what's yeah, a day look like I'm I get up early I always get up early um, mm -hmm. and the first thing I do in the morning is I come to my desk and I plan my day actually the night before I update my activities and to-do list mm -hmm. and then I start in the morning and because people are on different time zones, I got, you know, some people on the West Coast and, and different parts. But I, I organize myself in the morning with my list of things to do, the priorities. Mm -hmm. And then during the day, we have different calls and, you know, Zoom is big and uh, we write different articles for parenting magazines. So there's some writing and, and things we we do. And then I take a break. I take my dogs out. And obviously, my wife, uh, we do things throughout the day. And then I come back. Uh, again, depending on the day. And then the last thing I do is I review everything that I accomplished in the day and some of the new things and get ready for the next day. And, but I'm very disciplined right now because there's a lot going on, but I want to balance. I love what I'm doing. So that's great. That always <laughs> and, helps. <laughs> yeah, it always helps. And I liked, I liked my other life and you know what I did in tech now, great teams, great people, great companies, but now I'm really passionate. So I make the, make the point to be, you know, really well-planned but you can never be really well planned, as you know. Mm -hmm. Things during the day happen, and I respond. <laughs> we got lots of things that are coming in and going out. But you know, being planned uh, and ready 
uh, is sort of, and I've always been that way. I've been, you know, I spend lots of time making sure I get the priority things because there's a lot of things that are you need to do and you just need to prioritize between what I do at work and, and obviously family. And, yep. And all the other things that come up to pass every day. <laughs> it's a bouncing yeah. ball. You have to follow it, don't you? Now, I know that you were an executive in the global technology space. And, and I wonder what inspires a person to go, you know what, I'm leaving this relatively safe, secure environment, and I'm going to go and start Zero Media. Was there an element of fear? What was the risk like? Oh, and how did yeah. you manage all this? Well, it was a big, huge decision. So yeah. I had two worlds. I had the world of technology, and I've been very successful. And my my scale was around innovation, business development, partnerships, and M and A. So, mm-hmm. and and that was exciting. So that was a really exciting job. And I moved. You know, I was uh, recruited here in Dallas by AT and T, and I ran their data business and all that. And I, I truly enjoyed it. But I I always had this passion about children's stories and like, you know, creating these characters and music. And I never, I never really pushed a button. And I always said, someday I'm going to do this. And I had all these ideas and all that. And it was really back in 2017, 2016, my kids, because I had this story being developed, this a little spark. and, And they were the ones who encouraged me and said, you know, you need to do this. And then like I mentioned, the guy uh, I spoke of a mentor or such, and some people around me who knew me in this in this world said, you know, you should do it. And and then uh, I was really nervous about doing it. And and then I made the decision. And I remember going in. So you have all these corporate folks and all that who know me as you know the, this guy, the innovation yeah, yeah. guy. And I go into my boss and say, you know, I've got some news. <clears throat> I said, yeah. I said. I'm leaving. And they weren't totally surprised because I've, you know, I've done some startups and, you know, I've done, I've moved and done different things. So the assumption was I was going to go with another technology company. Uh. <laughs> and, and then I said, oh, nope. no, I've got this thing and children's content and music and they were blown away. And, but they, they knew me and, and, you know, then they were exposed to a little bit more what I was doing and they were hundred percent supportive. So I got, good vibes from that world, family and people close to me. And I had tested this because over the years, I created all these stories with kids. And, and so I felt like it was something of value. And that's how it happened. And then, you know, then there's a whole story of how we ended up with Zero Media and what I learned along the way, or, you know, you know, what the thing I'm taking from this, Chris, is that you don't leave anything for uh, regret or doubt or uncertainty, do you? Is that oh, important to actually no, just make I, sure you do it? Yeah, yeah I'm all in. And um, and I found, and I, you know, and I know you're the same way in what you're doing now and what, what you did before, and then you found something that became your yes, passion. Sir. Yep. And, and the, you know, the Volkswagen, I've seen that video. Every yeah, day yeah. You're doing you like it. Thing. <laughs> and, and, you know, one day I, I don't want to get out of the Volkswagen. (laughs) Yeah. And I went over around, I don't know what, what vehicle is the analogy to where I am. It's like a flying dragon. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Come back to the book. (laughs) And, uh, and it's been uh, no regrets. I still stay connected. And as you'll, I'm sure we'll talk about the book. I've been able to take some of the technology expertise I've had into this, you know, into this platform and Zero Media, you know, to make it interactive and, and different. So I still, you know, and I, I follow that world. I'm, I'm keenly interested in, you know, all the different technologies and, and uh, I watch what's happening and I help. I've got people I mentor back in that world. And, yep. but I've been able to, ex, ex, you know, use my knowledge there. So it wasn't totally, I'm never going to do that again. We're going to do this. I was able to bridge some of the technology into this, you know, as a role media and the be that spark platform and the book of course, uh, a little spark. So, Well, let's talk about a little spark because I, from what I have gathered and what I have seen, very, very exciting. I know that it's won the Mums Award, which is a big thing. Mm-hmm. And, I, yeah. and I wonder because uh, this is not just a book and I'm wondering if you can explain it because you could do it far better than I could, yeah. what the concept is based around. So I'll go back a little bit. So anyway, so, you know, I had the, uh, you created all these stories and 
my kids grew up, so they were my test market when they were you know, many years ago. <laughs> yes, yes. And but they grew up, and they, so they didn't like you know they, I couldn't <laughs> use them anymore. But I kept working on this stuff, and all I came what came with me was from that little fishing village in Flat Rock, the music and the big characters. And so then one day I was on a plane. I spent a lot of time on planes in my job, and this idea of this little mouse spark. And basically the plot, the lowest of the low, he steps up and saves the world. And so that's where it began. I began developing that. And then as I developed that, the theme of be that spark, that we can all be that spark, no matter how big or how small, we can do some amazing things. And, you know, you don't need to save the world like Spark did. It could be a, a you know, a kind thing you do for your neighbor. And, and, so, there's a, and so that idea of be that spark sort of, and A Little Spark being the first book, and we've got other books and music that we're doing under that umbrella. And my, my vision for it was, I wanted to create an experience where kids and parents could come together and enjoy a great book, listen to great music, the audio book, and really experience the characters and the music and the lessons, because lessons are really important in the of book. Course. So I wanted to create this experience, sort of a new, a new category and you know i said and so i get to that point and i said okay i've got to figure out how to publish this and i i think i i bought a book you know publishing for dummies one of those yellow books i got yes, a lot of those books. yes <laughs> <laughs> children's books for dummies you know because it's all relatively new yep and uh so i got that book and said oh you got to get a literary agent you got a publisher and so i went through that process and i sent these query letters out and the, it came back they said, no, you know, if you're in the children's genre, you're either a picture book, you're either a chapter book, or you're a graphic novel. What you're doing doesn't fit, and, you know, we're not sure we want to do this. And so I, I knew that it worked because I tested this with, with audiences. And, and so that led me to the point of I want to create Zero Media. So what we created, it, in essence, is a book. It's a you know, fully illustrated chapter books. It's 160 pages. It's well produced. Mm -hmm. you know, great material, the look and feel. And then we embedded music. So we created our own original music. And so when you're reading the book, there's QR codes at the particular point in the story, you scan the QR code and the music plays. Wow. And, That's and then awesome. there's an audio book. There's a URL where you can download the audio book. So some parents, they take the book out and all the illustrations, there's like 75 illustrations and they play the audio book while their kids are looking at the illustrations. And in the audio book, we have this incredible voice actor and you, you get to hear the character. So it sort of comes to life. It's sort of this multi-sensory experience. And you know, it really is a moment. And, and you know, this is the feedback I get where parents or, grandkid, or grandparents can sit with kids. And it's not something you do in one night. It's, you could do it over a week or two where you listen to or you read a chapter of the book, you listen to the music, you do the audio book. There's a whole online, there's 50 different activities that you can do that are related, everything from drawing the characters to uh, crossword puzzles, all related to the book. And so I wanted to create this experience. And, and so that's what, we, what we've created. And it works really well. The technology, although I use some technology, I don't want it to be, you know, you know how kids are now connected they're pretty connected. tech savvy aren't they yeah and they're tech savvy but they get lost in youtube and but you can't ignore the fact that it exists so you can't say okay you know this is what you're not going to you know get on there so we try to introduce technology in a way that enables the book um through these qr codes and you know you can down again you go to a website be that spark.com everything that we have is you know instagram all that be that spark and you go there and you can there's all kinds of different things. And we have, I have a great editor and creative guy. We create, you know, again, 50 activities. You can, we have our own Bob Ross, you know, Bob Ross, the, mm -hmm. the painting mm -hmm. guy from yes. years ago. Yes. And you know, the quiet guy. So we got this kid and, and there's a video of how to draw, you know, Ned Noof, the dog. Yes. And it's for that age group, like grade one, grade two. And so it's, it's, it's an experience. And, and then, the lessons are really important. And in the book, we, you know, we draw lessons like believe in yourself, friends, look, there's six of them and, and they're intertwined um, in the book. And it's an opportunity for parents to sit with kids and then they can, they can sort of put their own spin on it because, you know, I'm not an expert 
but we have a platform, we have this this content, and whether it's a parent with the kid, yep. and you know they're talking about their interpretation of the lessons, and or it's a teacher in a classroom, which is a new thing that we we just launched, and I'm really excited about that. You know, with the students, and and because I'm not trying to, you know, imprint my view. It's really provide a platform, and then you take it from there, and you create this incredible experience between you and your pupil, or you and, and your kid. Yes. And, uh, so, so it's a new category. I've heard. I never yeah. start. I never ever <laughs> called it that. I, you know. <laughs> well, I can see why you would say that because it certainly seems to be now. I, I wonder. Um, I know that um, there'd be a lot of people on the call today that'd be wondering. Well. Um, I'm a parent and um, I'd like to teach them more things over over time. Is Do you think there's room for further volumes or uh, versions oh, yeah. of this? Oh, absolutely. So our plan in the book, so you think about the little spark is the starting point. The bigger theme is be that spark. So we're already working on book two, which will right. be done by the middle of next year and it's not only a book two so like book one a big so it's the book <laughs> it's the illustration like 75 illustrations and you know we have this uh, amazing illustrator and each iteration takes like 10 each uh, uh, illustration there's 10 iterations and so we spend a lot of time on that and then you have the music so original music in fact i was at the studio this morning with this incredible guy i just happened to meet along my journey, who's now I've been working with for two years. And so we're up to song number seven in book two. And and then we have the audio book, which I love, love that part of it. And we got this great book. So it takes, you know, it takes a year. And I've started, uh, you know, a long time ago in book two. And then we're, we're working on the concept for book three. So there's three books and music and audio and all these activities involved, you know, as we as we build out the pl platform, and we try to make it available to everyone. So if people, you know, want to listen to the music, and the music is all published, at least yes. the first album, mm -hmm. and you can go on Amazon or you know, and just uh, a little spark by Chris Parsons, and you can hear all the music uh, that comes with it. And and when we provide the book, you know, you buy the book, you get the audio book, you get the full album, you get the embedded music, and there's there's fun things that we do at the back or interactive. Yes. So, so it's a, and it's, you know, so I'm working on, you know, doing PR and beyond you know, the first book at the same time and creating with my incredible team, the content for book two, because if we want to, you know, sequence, you know, book two next year and book three, uh, the year after, and, and we've got other things. Uh, but one of the, and, and I just want to jump in if yeah, I can. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. So when we did, so after I got rejected, by these publishers and literary agents who are, you know, who I think need to work on getting current with what's happening and technology. Yeah, the changes, yep. Yeah. The Innovation, changes. maybe. <laughs> yeah, and because, you know, if, if you're a big name author, then, you know, the publishers love you and you do your thing. But when you're an innovator and you're unknown. But so what I did, you know, before we finished the final version of the book, I printed a uh, hundred copies, this on-demand printing of A Little Spark version one, very different from what it looks right now. And I handed them out to parents, people I knew in my circle. What do you think? What do you think of the music? Is the music right? And so we got a lot of feedback from parents because I'm a big believer all my career. And anybody who knows me, I'm sort of customer back, yep. customer back. Yep. You just can't build it. They will come. And how to, And I'm not an expert in children's literature and parents, although I was a parent once. Yeah, I'm still a parent, but I was a kid's <laughs> I get it. Kid's parent a long time ago. Things change. But, but one of those people who read the book was this teacher, Mrs. Ramirez, this grade one teacher. And she reached out to me and said, I love this. Can we use it in the classroom? I said, wow. So we could create Be That Spark program for, for the classroom. And so I jumped in and we created a pilot program. It was a grade one class with like 22 students. And we created posters and you know we created basic lesson plans and she read the book. There's all kinds of videos. And they absolutely loved it, the, the multi-sensory, uh, multi, you know, interactivity. And so when that was ended, I said, wow, this is something. This Because I want to get it out there. I want to, you know, grade ones, everyone, everywhere yeah, experience yeah. this. And so, and then we, we, we finalized the book, got the book out there. And then I had these teachers call me and they say, you know, or email me and say, hey, this is great. We want to use it. <clears throat> and then I put together a little advisory group. And so for the last year, we've been working on Be That Spark School program, 
which has a full lesson plan and has, you know, links into the music and, and all these activities. And we launched it on October 1st in four schools here in Dallas. These are grade one schools and one in Virginia. And so the pilot is launched. In fact, I'm going to one of the schools tomorrow. I can't wait. There's, they have three grade one classes who are doing it. They love it. The parents love it. And part of it is, and it follows the book, right? The book, there's 10 chapters, so there's yes. 12 lessons, but it yep. follows the book and is interactive. And part of what we did, uh, which was input from someone else, because I, I just collect all this great, these great minds around me. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it be great they finish the program and you give them the book and they take the book home and they continue this idea of be that spark at home and with their family, because there's a lot of content. <clears throat> so part of the program is a, you know, there's 12 lessons or about an hour each. It fits into existing curriculum, right? It teaches reading, it teaches music, it teaches art. So it, it links in. Yes. And at the end of it, they get the book. And I, in the, in the case of Dallas, I'll go in and sign the book and they take it home. And then there's suggested activities at home. There's a workbook. And, and so that has become a major part in Zerome Media. Now that's, I don't like using the word product, yes. but that is a product. That's a of whole course. area yeah. education. And, and so we're working through the next set of pilots and, and, you know, we're working, we're working with some really interesting segments of, you know, children, children's literature. There's uh, one entity that we're, we're starting to work with, with kids with special needs. And, and, and I got a lot of feedback on that as well, because it's multi-sensory, because you have audio, you have video, you have music, you know, it, it can work, you know, in with, with, with children with special needs because they learn differently. Of course. And, and so we're trying to adopt a version of the school program for that, that group. And then there's another group, the homeschooling folks, which is huge right now. Yeah. And they're always looking for content and, and whatnot. So, so that's become, um, and it's so much fun working with kids and the teachers and they all get involved. And then as they create, they use the program, they commit, they say, okay, we want to create a worksheet, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then they create it or I help them or a creative guy helps them. And then that becomes something for all the teachers so this community resource, um, you know, uh, again, along the idea. You're, of you're never, fun. you are never short of work to be done and ideas to introduce and integrate no. into this wonderful platform, Be The Spark. And, you know, the volume two is going to be probably just as good, if not better than the first. Now, I wonder, uh, you've talked about Zerome Media. I'd love to understand where the name Zerome came from. So, yeah, and, and you'll, when you read the book, you'll understand. So basically in the, in the plot at a high level, there's a world. This is a fantasy world with, you know, animals. And this this group, this community lives around the lake and it's all ice. And the reason that they can survive in this, you know, harsh condition is they have a fire breathing dragon. Of course. Of course. And when he's playing, he, <laughs> he's sort of the the furnace <laughs> and they thrive and whatnot. And they but they have a different society. Their society is hierarchical. So the big creatures run and the little mouse like Spark is at the lowest of the low, but that's their society. <clears throat> they have an issue and the flame goes out and Spark steps up and they need to find a way in which they can keep this flame going. So they find, long story, and there's all these scary creatures and everything, yes, yes. and they find another world called Turon. The first place is called Zeron, Zeron, and the other place is called Turon. And so basically, and they're different. They're much more of a democracy and everyone is equal and it's a great place, but they're having issues as well. So in the end of the book, these two worlds, Zoran and Turon come together and they make, and they pick the best of both worlds. And when you combine those two names, Zoran and Turon, you end up with Zerone. Yes, fantastic. And, and, <laughs> and Zeron, and it, it's not only for the book, but Zeron is this, happy place it's a place where everyone matters where dreams come true and there's an analogy to our you know the human right and you know when you know that place when you worked in something and it was just the greatest everybody worked together and that's what Zerome is Zerome is is that place where we all connect uh, whether it's at work whether it's with your church but you feel like you're connected and that's and that's the word and and so now we're using that word in a lot. I've heard I love people, it. Yeah. People in 
in the business community that I worked before I left, they knew the words in Rome, these guys, and they started using it as an adjective. You know, it feels like some Rome talking about a partnership or talking about something. And and so it's, it's you it's very know, special. It is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, I, you can I've Google absolutely... it. And I, people, I, I tell people, Google it. Google, Google it. And you'll, see, <laughs> and you'll see all the stuff related to b Spark and, and all that stuff. So. All I can say right now is that I'm thinking to myself, I feel like a little kid thinking to myself, what happens next? What happens next? You're, you're, you're obviously an incredible storyteller. There's lots to take away from this, but you're importantly, you're also an educator, an innovative educator who is making a difference to children in a very different way, which is going to be um, received incredibly well. Clearly it has been because of the Mum's yeah. Choice Award and it, it is a, a complete credit to you and well done. Now, I'd love to ask you, um, when people want to find this work, where are they going to find it and you? Yeah, be that spark.com is the website. So just, mm -hmm. as long as you remember to, you know, be that spark. And the book, you know, A Little Spark by Chris Parsons is on Amazon and, you know, it's in stores, certain stores, you know, in the US and Canada. And, and you know, we're really pushing it out. And then the music, uh, which is, <laughs> is an amazing story of the music, but the music is available, you know, on all platforms. Or if you buy the book, it comes with the book. So we're easy easy to find and and that's an area you know i don't really want to talk about the music or yeah look uh, i was going to ask you about the um your yeah. team let's talk a little bit about yeah. um the people who are involved with it so i so i come to this point i got the story and i have no idea what i need i know i need an illustrator so i google it and of course and i find this incredible illustrator two actually illustrators in toronto so they mike motts and sergio drummond become you know, connected to my story. So they are the illustrators. And then I'm thinking, I need someone who can help me design a book, someone really creative who's done this work. And I just, through the illustrator, I found this guy in Oregon, Will Robertson, genius, one of the most innovative people I've ever met. And I've been working with him. So he helps create the content and we work, he's an editor. So he works yep. with me on the writing. And so that was that one. And then as I was building this, so I can't play an instrument. And I can't sing. And I can tell you, everyone goes out of their way to tell me I can't sing. And, and that hasn't changed. I've tried, you know. <laughs> Give but, it up, Chris. <laughs> I know, I do. But I, I have all this music in my head. I have these melodies and all this yes, stuff. Yes, yes. And so I started recording on my iPhone these melodies with me singing. And because music was core to this experience. And so I had the first three songs, you know, that had the melody. And then I knew the character that would sing it and where the book it would happen. And then I Google it, of course, and a music studio near me, and it came up, this cake mix studio, one mile away, unbelievable. And I walked in there one day, and I came in, and of course, I'm all passionate about this, this guy, Bruce Faulkner was there, small studio, he's brilliant. And, you know, he thinks I'm nuts, clearly. <laughs> I, I'm a street walker, yeah, you yeah. know, comes in, and I talk about it. And he said, come back in, come back in a week. And I came back in a week, and he and I have worked We've, we've, you know, published, I think we're up to 19 songs. Oh, wow. So he, and this is true, you know, there's lots of, you know, scenarios like this. But so I had this in me and I had no way to get it out. And I met Bruce and he was the spark that sort of, and he and I worked it. He's never worked with a musician who can't sing or play an instrument. So, <laughs> so yeah. and we sort of came together and it just works incredibly well. And he's, like if you recall uh, a cartoon, the most popular cartoon of all time for kids was Dragon Ball Z. It was yes, this yes. Anim well, Bruce did all the music for that. Oh, wow. Like, he, like he's got yeah. a million. I thought I'd kids. seen the name. Oh, yeah. No, and he does orchestra and PhD in music. And so he's got this studio here. And so he's connected into all the musicians in, in and around the area. Yeah. So as we created the music, you know, and I knew what song, the types of songs, then we'd, we'd produce, I'd come up with the melody and the lyrics, and then we'd get together and we'd say, okay, this is the song, we're going to use drums, we're going to use, you know, it's going to be this, this kind of genre, this kind of feel, and then Bruce would bring the musicians in, and we've ended up, we have right now in the collection, in, you know, Be That Spark, the music group, we have about 15 people, uh, voices, we have this incredible guitar player, you, you Google, 
Andy Timmons, I'll tell you, is the, uh, in the top 10 guitar players in the world. Wow. <clears throat> Just happened to be in Texas who knew Bruce or W.T. Greer, this incredible voice. So they came and then they've got become passionate about this movement. And so yeah, they yeah. join in and, and we have our, our uh, uh, the narrator for the uh, uh, the audio book is based in L.A. This guy, Brandon McKenna, who just incredible. So he's in. He creates like the 20 voices that are in the audio book. This guy, and they, they range from everything. And it takes different. a bit of work. I've seen, you know, um, I can't remember the name of the guy, but he's done a lot of work. It takes a, it takes a very special type of individual to be able to mix and match different um, voices, but over oh. a prolonged period of time. No, it's incredible. So I tell you, we wanted, I wanted an English accent. There's an owl called Oliver. I want him to have that English accent and sort of that English accent yes. character. You know yes, what yes. I mean, right? Yes, kind yes. of all knowing, all yep. knowing. Yeah. Owl. <laughs> and so we get in the studio and I'm, you know, I said, this is what we're doing. And I said, I need a British accent. And, and so Brandon says, which one? Yeah. And I said, okay. He, Let's said, start there. Six. he said, there's six. And he goes through all six. And they're all different. The Cockney, you know, as you know, yes, they're all yes, very yes. different as in any country, you know. And then we pick, I was just amazed, there's six. And, and we finally, <laughs> a, sort of a proper West London. And so that's Oliver in the book, but just an amazing talent. And now he's the narrator on uh, book two, and we're starting to work together. And, and oh. he sang a song. I mean, yeah. one of the songs on the album is, is by Brandon McKenna. So we've got this, you know, really tight team and then i have a marketing function which i needed so like pr and stuff like that I have which is standard media. stuff yeah standard stuff which you need because the the negative thing when you're doing it on your own so i created a publish publishing company if you go with a publisher they have all these connections and you know they're they're connected to all the media and you know your random house or whatever and so you got to build that so it's you know it's been tough and We've made great progress and, and, you know, success carries forward with more success. Compounds uh, itself. So the PR, the PR side is, you know, really important. And then we're working on the animation version of this. So uh, I have a, a partner in Los Angeles. We're trying to sing, f figure out how do we turn this more into an animated experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that we're working on next year. We're going to, you know, that, that's a whole other world. And that's this a guy's... whole other world. I, I have to say, Chris, um, I'm, I'm hopeful that the, the conversation that we've had and the audience that we have on the My Future Business Show is able to bring you some further exposure for this wonderful work. I know that it deserves it. It is yeah. certainly not um, a slouch of a production. Given what you have just said, there are some very high caliber individuals uh, involved in this work. And I'm so glad that people like you in this world exist. And thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. It was a pleasure, Rick. I really appreciate your help. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.